It's good afternoon. I can say that. It's like I think I'm 10 seconds past, past noon. Uh, so thank you for the introduction. Uh, I think that's more or less, more or less covered, covered everything. I also work for an incubator in Canada, so I see hundreds, uh, hundreds of machine learning startups. So I'm kind of immersed in the very, very small companies uh, uh, and everything around artificial intelligence. And of course, I've had over a decade, I'm going to talk about that, the, the decade adventure I had. Uh, which started as a tiny startup, my tiny startup, and, and ended as, uh, as Alexa. Uh, and the, yeah, what I want to communicate today is what artificial intelligence is, uh, and also the power of startups in changing the world in delivering these, these really exciting technologies to the world. Um, so, um, basically, the, 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 the very naive uh, format I'm going to talk about in terms of startups is, is basically four steps. You think big, you imagine a better world. If you're going to do a startup, it's, it's potentially years of your life. You may as well find something really big to do. Trying to aiming for something really small and then devoting large amounts of your life to it isn't a good idea. Um, you need to then find a technology that can deliver that change. Um, and you then go through this huge, torturous process of, of, of starting your business, finding the, finding the money to, 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 to build it. Um, hiring a team, iterating, and iterating is something I'm going to be talking about as well, and my, my story involved lots of iterations. And if you're successful, you then change the world. You potentially have a very big, very successful business at the end. Um, but first, you know, what is artificial intelligence? Um, a lot of us have seen the headlines. Uh, the press is full of it. And not many people really understand what it is, but we, we sort of see all these frightening headlines about massive job losses, huge amounts of money, new products, uh, the world being changed, essentially. Um, so the, def the, dictionary definition, the, the dictionary definition is computer systems uh, that ta do tasks that we normally associate with human intelligence. The, the definition is extremely vague. Uh, part of the reason it's vague is nobody has a good definition of what intelligence is. Everybody, everybody has an intuitive definition, but, but you try to define it, and it, everybody disagrees. There's, there's 20 different definitions. A, a, a more naive uh, and slightly more cynical definition of what AI is is tasks that computers can't do well. So if you know, we all associate computers with doing some things extremely well. They're fantastic at remembering things. Their memories are orders and orders of magnitude better than us. Uh, they can do arithmetic thousands and thousands of times faster. But you know, they can't necessarily have an in intellectual conversation with you. They can't read a book and answer questions about it. They can't, uh, you know, up until recently, they can't look at a video and understand what's happening in a video. Um, that kind of stuff. Um, and another term you hear a lot about is machine learning. Uh, machine learning is computer systems that learn, uh, and uh, it's unambiguously part of AI, intelligent systems, humans learn, that's how we're intelligent. Um, machine learning is now the primary way that AI systems are developed, and almost all of AI is machine learning. There's definitely AI that isn't, uh, but you often hear the term machine learning and AI almost synonymously because so much of, of artificial intelligence is machine learning. Um, and you also hear the term deep learning. Uh, deep learning is a, a very specific uh, machine learning technique, and it's a technique that has solved a lot of problems, made a lot of progress, generated a lot of excitement recently. So you know, deep learning is a kind of machine learning. Machine learning is a kind of artificial intelligence. And machine learning is exciting uh, because people have been programming computers for, for six decades. Uh, writing code, I'm, I'm sure some of you here have written programs. You basically have to define absolutely everything the computer does in enormous detail. And even after 60 years, there are tasks that, that it's proven impossible to program a computer to do with normal programming. Um, and machine learning is solving some of these problems. So computers are now able to do things that they haven't been able to do for decades as a result in artificial intelligence, as a result in advances in machine learning. And um, part of the reason for that um, is, is data. Uh, the human race is generating data. It's been generating data since the dawn of civilization. Uh, and it's accelerating. Uh, modern computer systems run much faster. We're generating data constantly with our smartphones. Uh, by some estimates, 90% of the world's data has been produced in the last two years. So the entire human race's civilization's uh, production of data is accelerating so much that, that almost all of it is recent. And machine learning can exploit that. So you often hear the term data science as well, which is about exploiting large amounts of data to, to do things, to do things that, that, that change the world, that advance technology. So uh, here's a really simple example. Uh, this is actually from my personal photo library. Um, and it's, it's really trivial and simple, um, but I can go to Google Photos and I can type camel uh, into, into uh, the search box, and Google will show me all the pictures I've taken. I've got many thousands of pictures, all the photos I've taken in the last few years that have a camel in them. And uh, it sounds simple. It's very, very easy for you to do that. 
Um, but if you imagine programming a computer to do it, if you imagine looking at that image on the right, that is a, a mosaic of pixels. It's just, it's basically a grid of, of colors. Uh, imagine writing a computer program that will look at, identify all the pictures in the world that have a camel in them. Even identifying which bit of that picture to a computer is a camel would be virtually impossible. Uh, but machine learning is enabling that to happen, basically because Google has millions upon millions upon millions of photos available to it, and it knows that a large chunk of them contain camels, and it's able to just say to a machine learning algorithm, you know, figure out what a camel looks like, uh, and then it can show you a new photo and say, is there a camel in that, and get an answer. Um, and as a result, can show me all, all my camel pictures uh, very, very quickly. Um, there's a load of other examples. You're using AI the whole time. You don't realize it. You're, you know, most of the, a lot of the apps you're using uh, are using, using machine learning. If you go to, uh, uh, go to Facebook, go to Amazon, the, 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 this content you see is totally tailored. Uh, it's totally personalized to you, and that's using machine learning to figure out what, what content is most, most likely to be what you'll buy in Amazon or what's most interesting to you on Facebook. Uh, robotics, your, the, the email that goes in your spam folder is a very simple example of machine learning. Uh, the the back-end systems of uh, retailers and um, businesses are using demand planning and all sorts of things that's learned from data. The machine translation you use when you go to a foreign web page and get it to translate automatically, and future things like self-driving vehicles. In order to drive, for a machine to drive a car, it's got to be able to see. So the advances that I just showed you with a camel, for example, is actually behind what's, what's, what's there with self-driving cars. It's AI understanding what's, what's, what's in an image and using it to identify pedestrians. You, know, you, want to, you obviously want to be able to see when there's a pedestrian in front of you to drive a car safely. Um, OK, so back. Um, Back, back to my format. I'm going to now talk very quickly about my startup um, in this framework. So think big. So the startup I founded, um, the, you know, the vision was a world where you could just talk to computers, where you could use natural language. Everybody knows how to interact with people uh, using natural language. But why is it when you go to a computer, you have to press buttons and type commands and you know, use user interfaces? Why can't you just talk to a computer like you can a human being? Everybody knows how to do that. Um, and, you know, that's not my vision. That's been the vision of science fiction writers for decades. Science fiction writers, you know, do not have the luxury of, I mean, do not have the, the problem of actually having to build these things. They can just imagine them and create them. Uh, unsurprisingly, there have been computers that you speak to uh, in science fiction for decades. Uh, I'm not sure how many of these you recognize. These are my favorite childhood, uh, childhood uh, conversational computers. Um, um, as you can see, those are the, those are the names. Um, okay, so that was the vision. Find or invent technologies to get there. So yeah, I, I sat down for uh, 18 months a year by myself, uh, tried to figure out what, what I needed to do, what to make a computer do to understand natural language, to automatically answer questions, to generate answers. So that was like 18 months of my life. Filed some patents. This was just before the dot-com crash. It was very difficult to get a business funded after that. Um, uh, but I did eventually found it. Uh, I did eventually find the money, uh, started, as a, um, started as a very small team, very small amount of funding, and then gradually improved, got more money, grew the team. Uh, and it took multiple attempts, though, to, to find success. So originally, you know, search was hot. Um, so let's create a website that answers questions instead of just giving you 10 links like Google does. Um, I'm embarrassed to show you this, but this is what it looked like. It was incredibly geeky. Um, but it would, it would answer questions directly. Uh, and, and, and unlike, I, I, liked, I liked examples that, that did things that Google couldn't do. So if you typed, is Madonna single into Google, it would give you McDonough's singles. It would be a music question. It wouldn't understand the question. And it shows you the external things, but, but you know, I could answer it and show off the technology at the same time, give you a very, very geeky answer. I like this one as well because Google couldn't answer it. What time is it at Google headquarters? Um, you type that into Google at the time, you would get a, a photo essay in Time magazine. You know, it's looking at keywords, not understanding natural language. We could answer it. We could show off all these uh, geeky facts that we'd use to reason to an answer. Um, unsurprisingly, that didn't result in lots of people using it, but it did show off the technology. So we then thought, instead of trying to compete with these companies uh, for a consumer product, why don't we actually just try and sell the technology? So we spent two years trying to license the technology to these search companies um, with some success. Although we, didn't ever, we never got a big deal, we never got into these companies. Uh, but we did, we did sell to some other companies. So notably, one of the companies we sold to was actually the Siri startup. Siri, uh, obviously, is famous as the voice assistant in the iPhone, but it was also a startup. And uh, we powered question answering for, for, that, for them uh, for a while. Um, but we never, we never, as I said, made a, big, made a really big uh, contract. So our third attempt was to just, you know, to publish millions and millions of questions and answers as web pages. Uh, Google would come along and index it. Um, and we would get lots of traffic. 
and we were actually we were actually pretty good at that. We had uh, we had a lot of uh, um, uh, we had millions of users. We were growing at 10% a week for over a year. Uh, at the end of at the end of that period, we had like 15 million uh, users would visit our website, um, and uh, you know we were starting to make money. So this is this is what uh, what would have, if you typed population of Iran 2010 into Google in 2010. Um, we not only got the top link in Google, we actually got the top three links. We were so good at it. Uh, and if you clicked on that, you would get a page like this, which was the same terrible user experience that we had before, except this time we'd made it even worse by overloading the page with advertising. <laughs> um, but we were, we, were, we, were making, we were making real money and very excited about the fact that we now had millions of people using our product. And then Google came along and changed their algorithm, and we lost half our traffic almost overnight. We still had millions of users. Um, but we then realized that, that, that this wasn't going to be the path to profits and success as well. And, you know, I guess we were, we were always a little, had some reservations because it wasn't also very exciting. It wasn't a change the world type business. It was, a, you know, it was our next step in exploring how we could apply this technology. Um, so our fourth attempt um, was to kind of, you know, completely change what we're doing, learn the product skills that we clearly didn't have, uh, and build our own branded products, which we called Eevee. The company had been called True Knowledge up to this point. Uh, so we created a mobile uh, voice assistant uh, that you could ask questions, ask it to do things, um, and we, we you know, doubled down. Uh, our investors have been very impatient, gave us even more money to, to do this, this, this final pivot. We bet the company on it, uh, and we launched that in January 2012, just a few weeks after Apple launched Siri. Um, and um, this is what it looked like. You know, as you can see, we actually had something that looked reasonably professional this time, and it could answer all sorts of interesting questions. Uh, and do very clever things, and you know the, the people really liked it. So you know we got some amazing press. Um, we were positioned; everybody positioned us as a Siri competitor because we'd launched just about the same sort of time, completely different technology, uh, and you know we were the British competitors to the largest company in the world, able to do things that they were not able to do. Um, so it was an extremely successful uh, uh, launch. We had over a million downloads almost immediately. We were number one in the App Store. We had huge amounts of interest. We had like 40 big companies bidding a path to our door, wanting to partner with us. And at the end of the year, we, we, we looked at our offers and we decided that being, being bought by Amazon was our best option. Uh, Amazon bought us. Uh, we became Amazon Cambridge and the team uh, and tech uh, became part of Amazon and we were heads down on this top secret, absolutely top secret project building Alexa and building Echo. Uh, and fi our final, you know, change the world. Uh, we launched Echo in 2014. Um, it was, you know, extreme. It didn't work particularly well then. We, we launched it in a very, very uh, unpretentious uh, way. Just put, it, just put it out, put a video out. It was almost immediately well reviewed. Um, 2016. I'm very proud of this uh, this slide. Tim O'Reilly is a, a major thought leader, uh, and he has positioned uh, Alexa as in the same group of products as the Mac, the World Wide Web, and the iPhone. I kind of wish I could leave this slide up the whole time. Um, <laughs> So, um, but you know, I'm very, very proud of what, 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 what the team, uh, you know, I was part of a big team that built this product. Um, very, very proud of that. And in 2018, you know, we now have real, real scale. Um, Amazon doesn't say how many devices have been sold, um, but there are tens of millions out there. Um, uh, the Echo Dot was the best, the best selling product in, on Amazon uh, at the end, of, the end of last year, uh, out of hundreds of millions of products. Uh, uh, so there are tens of millions of families that now use Alexa daily. Uh, there's evidence that you know, we've built something that's crossed that magical point where you can actually have a conversation with a computer, it's useful, people use it daily, it's natural. Uh, there's com competition arriving, Google Home. Uh, so I, can, I couldn't be prouder. Um, and it's, done, it's like an early version of the Star Trek computer. So you know, we now have the Star Trek computer version 0 0.1. It's now out there, it's being used. Um, but it's still really early, so this is a point I want to stress. You know, the, the, what, when you see science fiction computers, they do much more. They have real conversations. They, they can do things that, that, that Alexa cannot. You know, we just magically we just cross this magical threshold point where all the technologies that you need are there and good enough to, to do. Um, and, um, and that's true of AI generally. So you know, it, it's, it's crouching into our lives. It's solving problems that we haven't previously solved. It's incredibly exciting, but there is still huge amounts more to do. And startups are, I think, one of the major ways uh, that these technologies are, are brought into the world. You know, there are I see hundreds of uh, AI startups 
you know, in the Creative Destruction Lab uh, and through my angel investing activity, you know, there's, there's like a thousands of new AI startups, AI startups being founded each year. So it's a very exciting time. Thank you.